part nine of our adventure into cognitive psychology, we are looking at constructivism. First of all, it is not an approach, not a strategy, not a set of techniques. It's a theory or a philosophy. All right. It does align best with cognitive psychology. It says that the knowledge in our heads determines what is learned. What we already know mixes what with we are all learning to create something new. Knowledge is constructed by the learner. What's inside the head. Knowledge is never uh, transmitted and replicated inside the head. So as each of you are listening to this, each of you are getting a little bit different picture of what you are learning and understanding. Not based on what I say, but based in what is in your heads. So constructivism says learning is constructed a great deal by the learner as he or she mixes new information with the old knowledge in his head. So constructivist, that we construct humans, construct their knowledge and view of the world based on their old knowledge and uh, old way of seeing things. There's no such thing as objective reality because all our interpretations are based on our experience. Long-term memory content plus new information equal constructed knowledge. No such thing as objective view of reality. So new learning is dependent on old knowledge. We use these old file folders in our head to understand new information. Assimilation. This is that nice Piagetan term. Children learn by assimilating new ideas into existing knowledge structures. We have the old file cabinet. You get some new information. You automatically say, oh, what file does that go into? Oh, it goes into that file. And you add that new information. Accommodation. Children learn by constructing new structures or modifying old ones. You get some new information. You don't have a file for it to go into. You say, uh-oh, have to create a brand new file. And that is accommodation. Accommodating knowledge structures to uh, uh, assimilate or to handle new information. Some constructivist teaching practices, teaching practices based on constructivist learning theory or philosophy. First of all, student-centered learning is preferred. That's where the emphasis is on or given responsibility given to the learning. Uh, Non-examples are teacher-centered, where the teacher designs and is primarily responsible for transmitting knowledge directly to students in a very controlled, sequential manner, fully in control of all parts of the lesson. Control, control, control. Constructivist teaching. Uh, we seek to have actively engaged students that are actively engaged in the learning process. They physically manipulate things, creating things, designing things, speaking to others. A non-example of this, students listening passively and receiving information. Not in alignment. Learning is authentic. Uh, work is done in authentic or meaningful context. For example, if you're learning to write, you have students write real things, newspapers, articles. You have students out met learning math and social studies and science by building and measuring. You try to replicate reality to the greatest extent possible in the knowledge and skills that you are teaching and how students learn them. A non-example of that, of course, would be Worksheets done in isolation, memorizing, drill and skill book, etc., etc., spelling lists done outside of any meaningful context. You want to replicate reality to the greatest extent possible. Choice. Students are allowed choices in regard to the content, the process, how they learn, and product, how they demonstrate their learning. This does not mean total choice all the time, neither does it mean no choices ever. But in this nice continuum, you try to be over on the side of choice to the greatest extent possible, but there are sometimes, sometimes when you can have no choice. Social learning is preferred. Students talk to each other in groups or with others. There is discourse. Learning is enhanced when students are able to talk because you have to process, you listen, you hear things from different perspectives. 
Not an example, students sitting quietly. No talking, no working together. You're cheating. Right? That is not a good thing. That is not in alignment with constructivist teaching practices or philosophy. Assessment is seen as ongoing and dynamic. As students are learning, you're automatically looking to see how it's going. This is called formative evaluation, formative assessment. You not simply wait till the end of a unit and give a standardized test. You see that assessment is diagnostic to inform your teaching practice. Here, assessment is only used as a form of judgment. All right. So assessment is seen as ongoing, dynamic. You change, you alter your course based on what you see happening. Teachers trust children to learn through their own experience. You know that children are going to learn and naturally want to learn. The non-example of that, students learn through teacher telling and testing. Most of the learning happens outside the lesson, cannot be con uh, conformed, confined to a lesson. A lot of the real learning. The teacher is a guide on the side or a facilitator. All right? You are coaching, you are directing, you are asking questions. In that example, the teacher tells is a knowledge dispenser. I am all-knowing, all-seeing, I will tell you what is and is not. Learning experiences are based on students' natural desire to learn. This is in alignment with humanistic learning theory and holistic learning theory. We know what children are like, what they like to learn, what is developmentally appropriate, what is of interest to them. We try to align our learning experiences, plan them around this natural desire to learn. A non-example, students are manipulated to learn. We give them external rewards and punishments. I know it can't be either or here, but you try to strike a, a nice balance here. Open-ended learning experiences are embraced. And this should be number 10. I'm sorry about that, not number 7. All right? Um, not everything is defined. Open-endedness is good. We don't know where we're going. Non example is a specific body of information. This is one way to interpret it. This is what we're going to learn. Nothing else is of import. No tangents allowed here. None of that sort of thing. And just a uh, basic information on constructivism. I don't expect that you'll be able to carry this uh, with you today as a complete construct, but it should give you some understanding as you begin to read and encounter this term in other contexts.